What's the word, y'all? Today, I'm gonna be grading all 30 NBA teams based on a regular season. I don't care if your team could potentially go on a run, we just going on the 82 game sample size. This is based on expectations, this is based on execution, because realistically, we can say, hey, the one C gets an A plus and the 15th C get an F. That's not the way I'm doing it today. And yes, I understand that Bleach Report just put together their own article doing this exact same thing, but my witness is Ryan, my thumbnail designer. I messaged him yesterday about this. I've been working on it, okay? Leave a like, subscribe, and these are just my personal opinions about your favorite team. You let me know what you think, as you've probably been watching them more closely than I have. Starting off with the 76ers, I'm giving them a very, very smooth, very, very solid B. They ended the season at 37 and 35. Uh, I'm 47 to 35, sorry. Eight game win streak. All of that was really when Joel and B came back. And before Joel and B went down his injury, they were looking phenomenal. They, even though we we know that they have struggled to make it to the conference finals under Joel and B being a star, there was a lot of things pointing to this team could potentially cause some trouble. And they're a playing team right now where we're potentially going against like the Knicks in the first round if they can win their playoff playing series. But again, we don't care about that right now. Just the regular season, Joel and B missed over half the year and they still walked out with 47 wins. That's, that's pretty dope. JoJo was on pace to win his second MVP. He was averaging more than one point per minute. And now we know that Tyrese Maxey is an all-star caliber guard as well. Nick Nurse came in and changed some things. Joel and B was the hub of his offense. His playmaker was higher under Nick Nurse. I love the lot about this season even if I didn't watch them a ton after Joel and B got injured I'll be honest with you next we got the Bucks who are 49 and 33 this was a rough season given the expectations you trade for Damian Lillard and most people would say coming into the season that you have two top 10 ish players on your team right Giannis is no lower than three right a lot of people argue he's the best player the second best player he's no lower than three Damian Lillard had came in as one of the top 10 ish players in ball Eventually, you brought in a top 15 coach of all time. You remember that? Back in 2022, when he was voted one of the top 15 coaches of Doc Rivers. I, you don't believe me? There's your proof. 15 greatest coaches in the history of NBA. Doc Rivers just sitting on that list. And though Doc wasn't there for the entirety of the season, uh, under the 30th games of him being there, they weren't very great. Record-wise, they do have some signature wins. I don't want to neglect the fact that they played the Celtics very well this season. But they did all of that. Two top 10, 10 players. One of the best 15 coaches of all time, I guess. And they didn't win 50? Damon Giannis both played 73 games. They didn't win 50? I know Chris Middleton been in and out of the lineup, and that matters a ton. But, like, some other teams across the basketball had had worse injury luck and performed way better. And given the expectations of this team, of like, people are asking the world, which of these two teams, the Celtics or the Bucks, are going to win the East? That was the field. And a lot of people picked the Milwaukee Bucks. And they still could. Don't get me wrong. They still could. Giannis is injured right now. Hopefully he gets well soon and can play. But most people are leaning towards Celtics again because their expect or their execution hasn't been as great. So I want to give them, based on the expectations that we had for them and their execution, I want to get them like a D, a D plus. It wasn't beautiful, right? And again, they were one of the better teams of basketball. But given what we thought they could be, this was a lot worse than that. The Chicago Bulls. I <laughs> D minus D minus and that, that's just, hey the players this is what I want to say everybody be like I'm critical of my favorite team I think it's pretty normal I got no ill will to anybody on the roster my ill will is towards the people that's running the show right DeMar DeRozan had a phenomenal season and yet a lot of people would agree that come that trade that line they should have made some moves and because they did it I gotta give it like a D I gotta give it like a D minus we found out that Kobe White's a stud some of us, we never, never left. We never left uh, our stock behind. Ayo DeSumo's dope. We knew that. Alex Caruso is still one of the best defensive players in all of basketball, and yet we still sub 500? Come on, man. We should have made the decision. Um, so because of that, it's like a D, D minus, bro. That team had times where they looked really good. They were one of the best clutch teams of basketball this season. They're also one of the teams that lost to the Pistons this year. Twice. Two, two, two times. That's too much time on the Bulls. But they lost twice to the Pistons. The Cavaliers is a hard team to call, man. I want to give it like a C plus maybe. They won 50 games last year or 50-ish games last year. Um, this year, they're sitting at 48. So, took a little step back. Obviously, they dealt with injuries throughout the entirety of the season. But even going into the playoffs right now, when they're going against the Orlando Magic, I still don't know who this team is. I don't know. That series is going to be fun. I know a lot of people on Twitter talk about nobody's watching that series. I'm watching that series. I love defense, and both of those teams bring it. I might have to give it a C. I just don't know how to gauge it because when they were hot, that 20-4 and four run, 20-4, 20, 20 it was amazing. And then since the deadline, they've been sub-500. 
Oh, since the, not the deadline, the all-star break. They've been sub-500. I just don't know what to say, so I'm going to put it at a C. The Boston Celtics get an A+. It's not many teams that's going to get an A+. Plus. They were 64-18, and 18, a 14-game difference between them and the two seed. And they took their foot off the gas the last week and a half, two weeks of the season, and they still ended up with a 7-3 and three record because Peyton Pritchard is, I don't, I don't know. He, he's like he's like Bob Cousy out there. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, they they not starting anybody. Peyton Pritchard. Here comes a 30 piece, a 30 and 11 game. But yeah, they were head and shoulders above everybody in the association. What will happen in the playoffs? I don't really know. But the regular season, Joe Mazzulla did an amazing job. Everybody completely bought in. Jalen Brown statistically might not have had the same type of year of last year to make him All NBA player, but I thought he had a better overall season. Porzingis was relatively healthy this year. That's all you can really ask for. Perfect, perfect year. A plus. The Clippers, the first Western Conference team. I'm only going in the order of the, the uh, the first letter of your team. Clippers, 51 win team. They now they they basically didn't do anything at the end of the season because they had locked themselves up as a four seed. So yeah, Kawhi Leonard's maybe playing game one, maybe not playing game one. I thought all things considered, this was a pretty good season for them. I'm gonna give it like a B. I know they had that stretch. Um, where they weren't looking very good. We actually made a video about that a couple weeks ago that they weren't looking good. But they also had that 25-game that sample size where we were like, man, is this the team to beat? Which team are they closer to? The team that, that, that people should be fearing or the team that we saw the last month? I would probably steer closer to the team that we should fear. It was a healthy season for all of their guys, and that was one of the questions Tyron Lue came into the season and said, hey, I don't want to keep playing this low management game. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Kawhi Leonard played enough games that he's going to make an All-NBA team. That was not something that was happening the last couple years with him and the Clippers um, other than, what, year number one he made second team? Regardless, I know that they didn't finish amazingly, I'm giving it a B. Grizzlies, 27 and 55. Uh, D, I don't, how, how do you gauge this thing, right? Obviously, they were not very good without John Morant. John Morant comes back. He hits a game winner and so on and so forth. They start to look pretty solid. And bam, he tears his, he tears his labrum. And now they're like, okay, they play the most players on one season in the history of basketball. I think it was 33 different people played for the Memphis Grizzlies. Did they call your phone? Because they called my phone asking if I wanted to hoop for them. And I said, no. That's how they were looking for talent. I'm going to give it a, a C- minus for the gap year. Gigi Jackson's dope. Uh, uh, yep. The Atlanta Hawks, um, a 10 seed right now, uh, 36 wins. And my personal expectations for the Atlanta Hawks were a lot higher than consensus, so I don't want to grade it on my own scale. I would give this a, a C- minus probably. Um, they still were one of the higher power offenses in basketball, but we found out that Trey Young and DeJounte Murray cannot coexist when they were on the court together in the 1,000 minutes they played together. They had a negative net rating, and majority of teams out there, <laughs> a great majority of teams out there, when your top two players are on the court together, the net rating is usually positive. Not this one. They still have a chance to make the playoffs. Hell, they did it last year, so maybe they could do it again. I don't feel too great about it. Jason Johnson is going to be missing this play-in game, so I would probably give it like a D plus, maybe C minus in that range. Because cause you know what? Back to the Atlanta Hawks before we move on to the Miami. Quint Snyder is widely renowned as one of the best offensive minds that we've had at basketball over the last 10, 15 years. He couldn't fix this. They got to make some decisions. Quint Snyder couldn't make it at least decent? Ooh, that's some scary stuff. Um, the Miami Heat's regular season, they hit the over. It was at 45 and a half. They exactly hit the over on the last day of the season at 46. But with them going on a finals run, and though they did the same thing last year as an 8 seed going on a finals run, you don't want to be in the plan. I know they can do it. They've done it before, but you don't want to be in a play-in. This regular season was tough. There were pl plenty of stretches in the season where they were struggling to put up 100 points in 2024. 100. Jo Joel Embiid and Luka Doncic was very close to doing that in one single game. And they were doing that as a team. I'd probably give it like a, a C plus. They still have the, the pedigree to do something come postseason, but the regular season was a drag for the Miami Heat. The Hornets get like a, a D minus <laughs> d d minus we know that brandon miller is a stud we know that trey uh trey man is looking gonna be looking good next season but for the most part there's another another lost year for the charlotte hornets and i feel like we keep saying that at the end of every charlotte hornets year a lot of that this year is that Lamelo ball didn't really play um and we just got to get Lamelo healthy utah jazz how do you grade the utah jazz the end of the season um at 31 and 51 and at one point just like last year uh early in the season we're like oh is this the year the jazz could maybe make some things happen it nothing was really happening really um keontae george we know that he's about to be a stud even later in the season taylor hendrick showed us a lot of good flashes bryce sensible showed us some good flashes so there's some some building blocks in there larry market is going to get paid soon but another year of them just sitting around and waiting for the lottery odds to be in their favor i'm going to give it a d c minus 
C minus. C minus. D. D. I changed my mind again. Sacramento Kings ended the year at 46 and 36, a play-in game that they're hosting the Golden State Warriors, which is just not a good matchup for them. And they're they're struggling at the finish line with Malik Monk and Kevin Herter both being out. It might not end pretty for the Sacramento Kings, uh, but we don't really know. That's what the best thing about the play-in. You don't really know. It's a one-game elimination. I would say for the most part, this is probably like a C season for the uh, the Sacramento Kings. I mean, last year, they were the 3C with 48 wins. This year, that same, uh, they won they lost two more games and they're the ninth seed. That's how crazy the Western Conference has become. Um, but given the circumstance of them missing a bunch of people with injury, De'Aaron Fox had went on a little slump after his injury, I'd probably give it like a C. Uh, Keegan Murray, I appreciate for the entirety of the season, he stepped up as the primary defender against a, a, a wide range of talented players in the association. But for the most part, this wasn't as good as last year. So C. The Knicks get an A. They can't get an A-plus now. They can't get an A-plus, but they get an A. Jalen Brunson is the best point guard in the Eastern Conference this season, at least. This 82-game sample size, he was the best point guard in the Eastern Conference. They felt, felt uh, fought injuries of Mitchell Robinson, of OG Ananobi, of Julius Randle. The list goes on and on and on, and they still walked out on a 50, as a 50-win team. That is insane. Coach Tom Thibodeau don't know what he's doing. Dante DiVincenzo had a breakout year, hitting 40% of threes on eight attempts per. Josh Hart had multiple games where he played every single second. Say they were Miles McBride. <laughs> Says smart. It's Tom Thibodeau. I saw him ruin my favorite players, uh, 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 ACL, doing that. But all of that considered, this was a great season. This is the most fun Knicks team of my lifetime. And I saw those mellow teams. Um, and this team is significantly more fun than that, those mellow teams were. They're getting an A. They have the two, the, the Knicks are the two seed, bro. That's crazy. Shout out to the Knicks. The Lakers got to get a C as well, man. 47 and 35 and through february 1st they were 25 and 25 they had a 500 record right they were the ninth seed remember that they were the ninth seed at, at a 500 record and then they were hot guns blazing since february 1st and they still ended up as an eighth seed so as good as they were on the second half of the season none of that mattered it only helped them move up one spot anthony davis has had his healthiest season since his first season with the la lakers and he was phenomenal like you could argue he deserves to be on the All-NBA first team. I know it's probably going to be that last spot. It might be Tatum. It might be Brunson. But you can argue that Anthony Davis deserves to be on the first team. He was locking it down defensively and had another one uh, stellar offensive season. LeBron hit 40,000 points this year. But all I consider, I'm probably going to have to give it a C. Maybe I can raise it up to a C plus because the second half of the season, they start to put it together. And that's still a dangerous team in the playoffs. So let's say C plus for the Lakers. Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic are the 5C, and yes, they didn't finish well. At one point, they were in conversation for the 3C, but the Orlando Magic are one of the youngest teams in basketball. A 21-year-old Paolo Vancaro, Franz Wagner's 22, Jalen Suggs 22. That's three of their top three players. Their three best players are all 22 or younger, or they might be 23 now, given birthdays and stuff, but like, it makes no sense for them to be this good. This is how you do a rebuild, y'all. This is an A team. Because the expectations were not them even. The expectations when I went on um, Orlando Magic podcast, shout out to our guys at the Six Man. When I talked to them, I said, when we talk again, we'll be talking about them being in a play-in. And that was like good expectations for the Magic. They've avoided the play-in completely. And they're going to be in a real seven-game series. Now, we're going to find out who can fit for a seven-game series, who can't. We know that the offense has been a struggle for the entirety of the Orlando Magic franchise, basically. But... This is as good as it gets for a young up-and-coming team. Hey, the Mavericks. The Mavericks, another 5C. They also won 50 games. And uh, I have to give it an A as well. I, I know, I know, I know. Kenny, you gave the, the, a B to the Clippers, who are the higher C. The expectations for the Clippers are to, to do a lot better than that. You know what I'm saying? That's what the, You have Kawhi Leonard. You have Paul George. The expectations is to be higher than that. The Mavericks' expectations were like, can we, can we compete to, to stay the 5C? Can we potentially be a playing team? We didn't really know. And then the trade deadline happened. P.J. Washington took a little bit of time to start hitting the shots. But you saw his impact immediately. Daniel Gafford's impact immediately. They've been able to build a good, not even just good, a great defensive team around Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. That's phenomenal. Like, I just, again, I made a video about it, but I didn't see that as a likelihood, and they done it. This is one of the scariest lower seeds in the Western Conference. I have to give it an A-. minus. Let's, let's, let's temper it a little bit. I have to give it an A-. minus. Luka Doncic should be maybe the MVP of this league. And Kyrie Irving is one of the best secondary options you can ask for. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's been a really good year. Brooklyn Nets, I got, I'm sorry, Brooklyn Nets fans, 32 wins. I, I, I got to give it a D. I got to give it a D. Potentially, it's D-. I don't know. 
The expect I did not have expectations for the Brooklyn Nets because I looked at their roster and I said, hey, there's a team that I don't believe is going to be really good. They should maybe try to sell off some pieces. They didn't sell anything. The only trade they did was getting rid of uh, or bringing in Dennis Schroeder. Oh, okay. Like it was a real loss year, potentially. Potentially. Now, Cam Thomas jumped onto the scene uh, and, and looked great, and we don't know what he's going to be. But for the most part, this feels like a lost season for the Brooklyn Nets from my perspective. And because of that, I can't give them a higher grade. Different Nuggets, I'll probably give like a B plus. You know, they ended up 57 wins, tied for the one seed, but didn't have the the, uh, the tiebreaker between them and OKC. But Jokic is like an MVP too. Everything's still going well. Championship fatigue is a real thing. Michael Porter Jr. talked about that earlier in the season. But they, after the, the um, All-Star break, they went on this run. We we're like, oh yeah, this is the team that we believe is going to win a championship. And I would still have them winning the Western Conference right now. But regular season wise, it was good. B plus. Indiana Pacers, 47 wins. Listen, y'all, Tyrese Halliburton is going to get his first bit of playoff action. Playoff action. And it's against the Milwaukee Bucks, who they had a little tussle with, a little beef with earlier in the season. I cannot wait for that series, too. I got to get this a B plus for them, though. This is a team that uh, uh, they've always been a team that's been decent. The entirety of my life, the Indiana Pacers has been a decent team. And they kind of continue that. They kind of continue that, but this time it means a playoff appearance, um, and they're they're running right now. The defense looked a lot better after the deadline, and I know they had one of the best offenses of all time, but we're 29th in defense for the first half of the season. Pascal Siakam came in and said, hold on, where I'm from, we actually sit in that chair. Where I'm from, we actually play defense, and they started to play better defense, where I think the post-deadline they were about league average, and if you're going to have a league, uh, a league average defense, but one of the better offenses, I like that recipe. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a... Um, I'll give it a B. I think it was a good season for the Pacers, a B. The Pelicans fought through so many injuries this season, and they still wound it up with 59 wins. 59. And again, another team that skidded to the finish line, a lot of that was because Brandon Ingram's injured. He's finally back, played that last game, and they got destroyed by the Lakers. But regardless, he's back, and this is a, a fun team, a, one of the most fun teams in the league to me, one of my most watched teams in the league. It's cool to see that in the in-season tournament, everybody's talking about Zion and his weight, Zion this, Zion that. He's not the player that we expected him to be. And then he was like, all right, shut up. I'm going to lose whatever amount of weight y'all was talking about, and I'm going to go out there and be that all-NBA caliber player that we thought we were going to get. I'm probably giving them, considering all the injuries that they battled, if y'all remember, Trey Murphy the third missed the first bit of the season two. I'm probably giving this like a solid B. I think there's a good season for the Pelicans, especially given the expectations. They're one game away from being in the playoffs, so we could finally see Zion in the playoff setting because we ain't seen that yet. The Pistons get an F. They get an F. They won 14 games in a year. And again, it's not all about how many total wins you get. 14 wins on year five of your rebuild is disgusting work. They tied 28 straight 28 straight losses. And the only game that you you lost, you won is because OG Ananobi got traded like 24 hours before. So it was like six people on the roster against the, the, the Raptors. That's nasty. That's nasty work, bro. You're getting an F. Then we're going to get to the Raptors who won 25 games. And I'm just happy that they picked the direction. They lost Fred Van Bleet for nothing in free agency. And I was like, you cannot let that happen again with Pascal Siakam. You cannot let that happen again with OG Ananobi. And they made the, they, they made the decisions, right? Did they get back adequate value? Only time will tell because a lot of draft capital. And then we got to see what quickly an RJ Bear turns into. I'm giving this like a C minus season, right? We know that uh, Scotty Barnes is a perennial all-star player. And after his sophomore year, there's a question on whether or not he could be that, bro. And he has been. He made that all-star appearance. I'm probably giving it a C minus. The Rockets get a B plus. I'm teetering B plus A minus, bro. 41 and 41 in the season. And again, last year, let me take a their last year record. Last year, they were 22 and 60. So you're trying to tell me you were 20 games better this year? Now, granted, they still ended up as the 11th seed. And for a second, they were pushing the Warriors to get that 10th seed. Regardless, they brought in a new coach in Ime Udoka who changed the entire philosophy of this team. I had said before, years ago, that when I watched the Houston Rockets last year, it felt like AAU basketball. And if you don't know me, I hate watching AAU basketball. But that's what it felt like. Ime Udoka said, no, we're going to be a defensive-minded team. We don't even really have a ton of defensive-minded players in our rotation, but hell, hell we're going we gonna to shift the narrative about a bunch of us. And they won 41 games. That is beautiful work. Uh, Fred Van Vliet came in and said, hey, look what happens when you have a real point guard. Dylan Brooks came in and said, hey, look what, you, look what happens when you have a, a, a tone setter on the defensive side of the ball. 41 wins is phenomenal. I'm giving it an A-. I say A-. minus. It probably would have been an A if they snuck into that team, but A- minus is a phenomenal season for the Rockets. Cannot wait to see what happens next. The Spurs won 22 games this year. Last year, without Victor Wimbiama, they won 22 games. <laughs> so they added the, the best prospect in the history of basketball and he's lived up to the hype and they still didn't get better by a game that's something 
Um, I'm probably I'm probably giving it a D plus. I, it's, everything I know. This is what I know. Victor Wembanyama is all led in a bag of chips. He's he's gonna be next season probably a top 15 player in basketball if he's not already. Devin Vassell, second half of the year, Devin Vassell, his feel for playing with with Victor Wembanyama was a lot better. I ain't got no numbers to say that, but the eye test. I watched a lot of Spurs this year, y'all, because Wemby's that crazy. The, the, he just felt significantly more impactful with Wimbin Yama. So there are some things to take away that were really solid. Um, when Wimby was on the court, they were one of the best defenses in basketball. When he was off the court, they were the worst. So there are some little nuggets here there with him and Devin Vassell played together with Trey Jones. They were a net rating of like a seven point something. Like it was some great, it's some great stuff. The round of edge of stuff is a little bit crazy. I'm probably giving it a D plus because you added the greatest prospect in the history of basketball and you didn't get one win better. Sounds kind of crazy. The Suns ended the year as a six seed. And I do want to give credit where it's due. The Suns went through the last, what, 12, 13 games of the season where they had the hardest schedule in basketball by a, a wide margin. And they finished what? Let me, let me, I can double check. What did they finish? Here are their last 10 games. It was Denver. That was a win. I think Jamal Murray didn't play, but no, none of that really matters. They lost to OKC. That was a bad loss because if I'm not mistaken, OKC did not play Shea or J-Dub. So that's a bad loss sprinkled in there. But they beat the Pelicans. One of the, the I know they lost later in this in the year, but that was such a significant win. That's when Booker put up for went up for 50. Then two nights later, they went into Cleveland, went against Cleveland, won that one. Devin Booker with 40. They beat the Minnesota Timberwolves, held them to under 100 points. Yes, they lost here to the Pelicans, and then they lost to the Clippers here. But they finished on a three-game win streak. So I want to give credit where it's due because they had such a hard schedule. And they closed it out. And a lot of people, even like the algorithm that try to predict, oh, this team has a 60% chance. A lot of it had that them they, they were going to finish in the play-in. And they finished as a secure seed. And they go against the Temples, which, again, we're going to talk about matchups tomorrow probably. That's a series right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but collectively, I'll probably give it a B-. minus. Because a lot of it was like, hey, we got so many injuries, right? Bradley Beal missed so much of the season. Then when he came back, Devin Booker missed the week. And then so on and so forth. Kevin Durant had one of his most efficient seasons. And they won 49 games, which is good. I'd probably give it a B-. minus. I just, uh, B-, B-, minus, B-. minus. OKC Thunder. Hmm. In my notes, I have A. 40, 57 wins. I'm giving it an A+. Plus. This team's over-under was 44 and a half. They blew that out of the water. This team is one of the youngest teams. We talked the same thing about the Orlando Magic. One of the youngest teams in basketball. Didn't matter. They were top 10 offense, top 10 defense, top 10 in half court. Oh, top 10 in half court defense, top 10 in transition defense. They were perfect. Nearly as perfect as you can get for a regular season. I'm giving it an A+. Plus. Minnesota Timberwolves, you're getting a smooth A. After last season, everybody was questioning. Last season, let me see where you finish. Eight seed, 42 wins. Oh my God, is Rudy Gobert the guy to be on this team? Can Carl Anthony Towns transition to be a power forward? The answer was yes and yes. Nobody ever questioned Anthony Edwards. We all knew he was a stud. But the, the question was yes, yes. And Keir Alexander Walker, one of the best off-the-bench players in basketball. Nas Reed in contention for six man of the year. Real stuff. Real stuff. The defense was head and shoulders above a lot of different teams. Most of the teams in basketball. A, you're getting an A. You're getting an A. Nobody expected you to be 56 wins. Some of us made a video um, saying the Minnesota Timbers are under a lot of pressure. That was a clickbait video. In that video, seven months before the season, or seven, a month before the season started, in the video, I said that the Minnesota Timberwolves are poised for a breakout. Now, even with that, I didn't think that breakout was going to be the, the goddamn three seed and teetering the one seed all season long. But again, I, I, I felt good about them. I feel good about it. Trailblazers are a tough team to gauge because this is technically the first year of their rebuild, right? Um, School Henderson, last month of the season, started to look better. Do I breathe? A good find. I feel like when you're doing the rebuild, you have to find those good finds, and he's like, what? like four years removed from college but found his way into the league and got a real contract like that's a great story um but because of the first year to rebuild of course they're gonna be bad i'm probably giving it a a d plus let's just say d plus to be fair golden state warriors are getting the c minus they're one game away from missing the playoffs completely hell d plus now d plus d plus i forgot about that I, they went through a lot this year and some of it was was some some stuff that it's some hard breaking things they went through right um but wiggins fell off a cliff after an all-star year and helping him win a championship draymond couldn't keep his hands to himself the first part of the season and for them to be one game away from missing the playoffs like that is way lower than expectations because i thought they were a lot to make the playoffs and here we are and lastly the wizards who won 15 games this year but also, just like I just said with the Trailblaze, this is technically the first year of their rebuild. P first year post Bradley Beal. And when they're in the first year of a rebuild, the goal is to lose. And they did that um, a lot. 
somehow only ended one game better than a team that lost 28 in a row. Like, that's that's kind of crazy. I'm giving it a D. Maybe even a D minus. It's not an F, but maybe a D minus. Belal looked good. I mean, Corey Kisper had a great season. Denny Dia had a great season. There are a lot of things that you can smile about about the year trust other than looking at the record, but the record is still... Mm. Uh, let's say D. Let me know what you think, man. Those are my awards based on this season. Uh, agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comment section. I'll see y'all tomorrow.